Hello, everybody. My name is Ken Honda. I'm the author of the book, uh, Happy Money. Um, I'm doing this from uh, Japan. This is my retreat center. I'm surrounded by thousands of books on happiness and money investing. And I'm super happy and excited to, to do this. Uh, I think we're supposed to be somewhere in Amsterdam or Europe, but uh, this could be more fun because I can get to do this with my family and also uh, do this from my studio. And I don't know wherever you are, but um, um, you can probably relax in your home. Some of you stay up late, some of you are early in the morning, but I'm so excited to share about uh, Money EQ, which I'm going to talk about for the next hour. I usually do this um, uh, two or three day um, worth of seminar. I'm, I'm pushing everything to uh, one hour. So I'm gonna do it, speak a little faster than um, regularly, but I just want to um, share all the information I have on Money EQ. So I'm gonna divide this um, presentation into two parts. One is I'm going to talk about uh, money IQ, money EQ, which I have learned so much from my father and from my uh, mentors. And I'm gonna take uh, 10, minute, uh, 10 minute of uh, Q&A. And also the second part, I'm going to share about how to heal your money trauma, how to overcome it, and also take a look at the money beliefs uh, that you have, both a positive and negative. And also um, um, for using the last few minutes, I'm going to share with you my great mentor Wahe Takeda's arigato or appreciation approach with money. Money EQ, I don't know uh, how many of you have uh, taken my courses and uh, or even take a look at my book uh, because my book was everywhere. It was a yellow smiley mark and uh, it was all the airport uh, major airport in North America and uh, Europe. So, uh, and uh, um, in this community, a lot of people have been generous enough to talk about uh, money EQ. So uh, this is what I'm going to talk about. So I have done um, a lot of studies with money. My father is a very successful accountant. And since I was uh, five or six, he took me to shopping malls and taught everything about money. And after doing a lot of research, um, I realized that there are only three relationships with money. Uh, money controls you, or you control money, or a balanced friendship. Uh, in other words, you can be a master or a slave or a um, friend. And the uh, ideal situation is um, you become friend with money because uh, your best friend um, cares about you and best friend thinks with you and best, uh, your best friend uh, works with you. So if your relationship uh, with money becomes that, I think you'll be uh, much, much happier. But unfortunately, most of us are having a lot of struggle. We have so much fear. So um, I just am um, going to solve the mystery why. And I have done many money counseling in my life. And I realized that there are so many people um, who struggle with money. And some, of, some people have so much money but yet they, they struggle internally. And I wonder why is that? And then this is um, the discovery I made. Um, depending on uh, the relationship you have with money, you have different money personality. For example, you become compulsive spender and you become compulsive saver. Uh, you, um, this means you, you spend, 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 or you just save, save, save or compulsive earner, you are so addicted to making money. So these guys are talking about uh, the business models and okay, I got another business ideas, uh, everything about accumulating wealth. And another one, passive money personality type is indifferent. Uh, they're the monks. They don't even think about money. And uh, hippie type, they're um, afraid of money. So they try to be away from money. And um, the combination money personality type is repressed spender. They uh, usually save, 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 but few months of saving and you go like, I'm tired, tired of that. And then you spend it all. Or gambler, I'm sure some of your friends are this way, or maybe you are this way. Um, you get to gamble with money. You enjoy the excitement. And also warrior, my mother was like this. You constantly worry about money. This is another personality type. And I'm sure you can see a family member um, in um, 
in all of these types. It could be your partner. It could be your brothers and sisters. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, we are born and brought up in the same household, but your brothers and sisters could be a, a completely different type. And even you have, for example, as a parent, you have uh, a couple kids or three children, um, you're, you taught them the same stuff, but um, your kids um, turn out to be very different. And uh, I'm just talking about why in my books. But um, we became that way because of the way we deal with emotions around money. And um, a lot of people think, and a lot of uh, money experts are talking about how to deal with money uh, financially, but they often ignore uh, the fact um, that there is a big relation uh, between emotions and also money. And your behaviors are so affected by the emotions you have around money. So I'm going to share with you five emotional blocks. Anxiety, you know, most of us are familiar. We are all afraid, especially what's happening in this world. Anxiety is probably the number one uh, thing. You know, I, I do this podcast called Dear Ken. Um, um, last week, we've hit about 45 million downloads. It's in Japanese. But the most uh, frequently asked question is, how to deal with money anxiety. I'm going to talk about it in the second section, but we are, most of us worry about money. It doesn't really matter how much we have, how much money we make. Um, we constantly worry about money. It's almost like an addiction to worry about money. And fear, we are afraid of money. Money could be a monster in your house. So as much as we love money to be in our house, we want to keep money away because we are afraid and we doubt money. Uh, money gives you a lot of doubts about you, uh, doubts about what you're going to do. And guilt, uh, wealthy people often feel guilt around money because uh, they feel guilty that they're comfortable. And also self-neglect. And uh, the thing I didn't put is like shame too, but a uh, uh, lot of financially challenged people feel shame because they can make both ends meet, they're in debt. Uh, that brings up a lot of emotion. And uh, the next section is money uh, can make us feel anxiety and fear, anger and resentment. I've seen a lot of people fight over money. And even in my session room, um, couples fight um, over a little thing. It's just about a few dollars, but it's not the numbers, it's just the emotions. And money, can trigger a lot of people's suppressed emotion. It's, my mother was a very quiet um, person, but when it comes to money, she sometimes felt very agitated. And I got scolded a few times about money. And uh, I don't remember any other um, uh, circumstances that my mother was upset with me, but money can trigger a lot of hatred, anger, and all the other thing. And, Sadness and sorrow, which I'm going to um, uh, talk about in my uh, second section, we feel so sad about money because we've seen so many fights and um, uh, angry people and also uh, tragedies around money, especially uh, if your parents were divorced, it's highly likely that the money was involved in, in these fights. Uh, and so we feel sad and we feel sorrow about uh, what went wrong. And hatred and depression. We are so uh, hated uh, because we did something wrong with money, or we feel depressed because well, we make all the bad decisions about money. So my um, vision is to free everybody from money worries, money anger, money resentment, because you, every one of us can be free from these stressful emotions. And superiority, superiority and inferiority. We feel superior because we have more money or make, we make more money. And, uh, and also you feel inferior because we are making little money. Why is that? It's just a number, but it's almost like a religion that uh, the number, the uh, higher the numbers um, of your salary, somehow the higher values are almost like uh, we're, all, we're almost think. Okay, people can make us feel guilt and shame, numbness, excitement and joy, 
and appreciation and love and happiness. And money IQ principles, I go very quickly, earning and making money and spending and using money, protecting and saving money, increasing and investing money. Money IQ principles is uh, how to receive. Uh, that is a number one. Um, if you can receive money well, you get to now enjoy money and feel abundant and ability to trust the flow because uh, in ideal situation, money flows like water. You don't even notice. And uh, number four is share money well. I'm going to talk about my mentor, Wahei Takeda, who's called Warren Buffett of Japan in my second section. And how to uh, grow beyond your money is don't say money out of anxiety. Understand you lose money before attracting money. Um, and, and likable people attract money naturally. So uh, the, the key to abundance is to accept who you are and like uh, about yourself more. And eventually, hopefully, if you love yourself more, uh, that grows uh, your money container so you can be happier and receive better. Four, price your services appropriately and express appreciation at every opportunity. And understand self-doubt is part of the game. Because in the process of receiving abundance, we wonder, is this the right path? Um, am I doing the right thing? And try to always see the positive side. And also believe strongly in the vision. If you have a vision, you're likely to uh, receive more money, more support, and overcome your emotions about money and share experiences with others, which I'm going to do, um, help you in the second section and be open to receiving love and support. We are so good at giving, but we are so bad at receiving and Money EQ teaches you to receive first. Okay, so the second half is I'm going to talk about money beliefs, a negative one first, because um, after doing the positive, you just feel um, neutral. So uh, negative beliefs we have about money is, for example, money is bad, I'm sure. At uh, uh, one point in your life, your parents or your friends or a teacher or your minister or somebody said money was bad. And money disappears fast. That is, uh, I often hear from um, young people, Ken, I don't know why money disappears so fast. You know, when, um, when I thought uh, it came yesterday and then it's gone the, the day after. So uh, a lot of people feel this way. Um, and also money hurts people. If you have money, it could be potentially dangerous because um, look at uh, wealthy people, you know, uh, their kids may be um, uh, abducted or if you have money, people could be jealous to you. Money is scary. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have this because I would ask uh, my clients this question often. Uh, if money was a person, who would that be? Would that be a scary person? Would that be a fun person to be with? Um, if you have um, <clears throat> this negative belief about money, that money is scary, you don't want the person to stay in your house. Number five, money creates trouble. A lot of us are falling into these negative beliefs, so that's why we try to stay away from money. And the positive one is money supports people. Like I said, in this uh, terrible um, circumstances, a lot of people are helping one another. And uh, just look at the numbers, uh, how many millions of uh, people are supported by government uh, payment, a paycheck. And uh, so money can support people. We tend to forget, but money can help people. Money makes people happy. I've seen a lot of people um, smile when they receive money, especially unexpected one. So I have this fun habit of carrying envelopes full of cash. And uh, when somebody is in financial problem, uh, in trouble, I give out the envelopes um, depending on their situation. Sometimes I give a $100 uh, dollar bill and sometimes uh, 10,000, sometimes a thousand, sometimes $50, sometimes $10. And um, it doesn't really matter uh, how much I give them they're just so, some of them go into tears uh, because money makes people very happy. Money helps realize dreams. If you have more money, 
what would you like to do? Uh, do you want to open your own store? Do you want to follow your heart and just live overseas? Or do you want to write a book? Um, whatever that is, money can help you realize your dreams. And money uh, brings com uh, communities together. This is a great part because if you have uh, enough money, uh, a lot of people can um, be closer, they can um, eat together, and they can have so much fun together. So uh, I, I understand you can picture that uh, money can bring people together. And money warms people's hearts. I've seen it all the time. Um, uh, about uh, um, a, a year ago, in my seminar, I invited uh, my uh, close friend, Barnett Bain, who's a movie director, and who was in, um, who, whose house was just burned down by fire. And um, I wanted him to talk about the fire and all the uh, people who suffer from the fire in Malibu. And a lot of Japanese uh, students um, at, the, at my seminar felt so touched and they wanted to do something. So they started raising uh, money uh, for Burnett and uh, his wife and also um, his friends and community in Malibu. And uh, we, uh, we have this tradition when somebody's in, in a tough time, we raise uh, cash and then give it to the person. So we've uh, raised enough cash and just pass it over to him. And he went over and just started um, um, distributing uh, money in the envelopes we gave. And uh, a lot of people cried because they didn't expect money. You know, they didn't get anything from the government at the time, but uh, the money comes from Japan, from uh, perfect uh, strangers. And then uh, the story wa uh, was uh, on the newspaper and a lot of people, I really enjoy reading it because it warms people's hearts. And the fact that we didn't think of much about giving and sharing what we have, but we are so surprised and uh, uh, we feel happy that it helped American people feel warm in the time of the crisis. And also I'm going to focus on healing money trauma because in the biggest part of uh, money EQ, identifying um, money trauma is important. For example, I was denied a homestay uh, program when I was uh, 16 uh, to LA or uh, Australia. My father uh, had a drinking problem. So I, uh, even though I knew he had the money, uh, he didn't want to spend money. And uh, I wanted to bring, bring the topic up on the table, but I couldn't do that because my mother said, uh, when your father is feeling good, you can bring it up. In my house, that means never. So I was denied this opportunity, my dream of learning English in LA or uh, past in uh, Sydney in Australia. And I still feel the pain because I was carrying the brochure in my bag and it was torn, torn apart uh, uh, because uh, I was carrying it every, um, every day. And then I was looking at the brochure of the homestay program. But because of the, this money trauma, I sometimes feel uh, um, pain when I try to start something uh, new. And I feel the, uh, uh, my body is tense and I feel like uh, my dreams will, will not probably realize because I'm not good enough. And I'm sure you denied many things uh, when you're small, uh, maybe denied soccer lessons, piano lessons, or uh, summer camps, whatever that is. And just, face and confront your past. What happened? And then recall both happy, unpleasant, and also unpleasant memories about money from a childhood and youth. And identify current financial situation. You know, you, if you have uh, some kind of money trauma, that stops you from having more money, receiving more money, uh, because money could hurt you. So I don't want money because, it, it, you know, I don't have a good experience with it and clarify your family's money history. Um, I recommend you do that with three generations, your pa uh, parents' generation, your grandparents' situation, and uh, just you can see the dots connected uh, because of your uh, grandparents' worry about money. And that has passed down 
to your parents' generation. And the money worries and fear around uh, this uh, issue gets uh, passed down to you. And you may want to pass it on to your kids, or if, even if you don't have kids, you're kind of stuck with this intergenerational blocks. And reflect on um, how your friends and family's belief influenced you. Oftentimes, um, you, uh, you're, you're often heard, um, money doesn't grow on trees, you know, you cannot do everything. So number two is moving forward. Acceptance. It wasn't all your fault or not, uh, or not your parents' fault. You know, um, if you imagine what happened in that situation, your parents are probably in 30s or 40s, could be in their 20s. They knew nothing. You know, they were just kids too. So they were uh, also confused about money. They may have a hard time making both ends meet. They worried about money because they just lost a job. So just if you pull your camera and just look at the situation, you feel like, oh, okay, I was hurt, but they were hurt as well. Because just imagine uh, if uh, your parents were a perfect, happy couple, perfect, happy people, do you think they would stop their kids from having fun? You know, uh, I'm a parent, so um, I understand if you have a child, you want to give everything to your child. And if um, you feel like you cannot give certain thing to your child, you feel so hurt, you feel so bad about not being able to give. So uh, you may not realize that you're hurt, but your parents were hurt as much as you were. And realize healing, come, healing comes from understanding and forgiveness. If you can first understand what went on and then forgive your parents for being the way or for saying things probably they shouldn't have said. And if you can just forgive your young uh, parents and a young little, little cute you and just uh, do a group hug in your um, imagination, uh, deep healing starts happening. And use appreciation as a tool that blesses your life. Uh, even though that was the best shot that your parents get, could give you, um, just, um, just feel the appreciation if you could. Um, it may take a, a few opportunities to do this, but if you just, at least a, uh, if you're willing to face this money trauma and try to understand it, and potentially, um, or if you, could, if you could do it, forgive it, your life would be very different. And um, I just wanna share uh, my learning uh, from my master, Wahei Takeda. Look at his smile. I miss him so much. He passed away a few years ago. Um, he was called Warren Buffett of Japan, and he was one of the wealthiest people in Japan. He's, well, he was a great investor. He was a major investor, uh, a shareholder of uh, more than 100 public companies at one time. And when I first met him, I asked him, uh, what is the secret of wealth? what would you ask Warren Buffett if you had a one-to-one -one situation? And I was kind of, uh, I, was, I was expecting not exactly stock tips, but uh, like a savvy way of becoming rich. <laughs> but he said, um, all you have to do with this smile, all you have to do is arigato your money. And he says, what? Arigato your money? And he said, appreciate money when, when it comes in and also appreciate money when it uh, goes out of your life. When you spend your money, also say arigato or thank you. And if you start doing that, your money container will be bigger and then in incredibly money will come in easily. And then without your effort, you can accelerate this uh, cycle of appreciation and what you appreciate appreciates. If you appreciate money, um, money will appreciate you back. So all his teaching was very Zen. So I didn't understand any of that at the, at the time because I was young and I, and I wanted fast results. I'm sure many of you feel that way sometimes. But as I learned more about him, I learned 
uh, arigato your money or uh, thank your money or appreciate money coming in, money going out is the first start of uh, this cycle of appreciation. And what I learned about this gratitude from uh, my mentor Wahid Takeda is appreciation is the answer because once you appreciate what's coming into your life, it doesn't really matter if it's money, love, new opportunities, or sometimes uh, he even appreciated when something bad happens, when he goes um, in a, into a car accident, he says, thank you accident for being a small or minor accident. It could have been worse. So I uh, accept the damage, but I appreciate that uh, the fact that I didn't, I didn't get hurt. So appreciate what comes into your life and appreciate what's uh, leaving your life. Appreciate your partners, appreciate your uh, jobs. Uh, your job was not in sync with you. That's why the job left you. It's not you were deserted, you're ditched by the job. Uh, you were apart because um, you don't have a relationship anymore. So appreciate whatever uh, leaves your life. That is the answer. And arigato in, arigato out is a meth method I um, just shared. And compassion raises your energetic vibration. He called it maro up. Uh, 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 my uh, mentor and a uh, great friend, uh, Janet Atwood, uh, she's a creator of uh, Passion Test. And she uh, and I co-authored uh, the book Maro Up. You can uh, uh, find it in Amazon about Wahe. But uh, Wahe said, if you raise your vibration, that means your happy aura or, or just uh, uh, this, um, this attitude to be able to support other people, somehow it creates a space and then um, it creates a business opportunities, investment opportunities, and uh, uh, the cycle of appreciation of the money starts. Uh, he said, human mind cannot focus on two things at one time. So if you can focus on money appreciation, you have no space about worrying about money. So just um, if you feel worry about money, just say, thank you money for being in my life. And then that will shift your energy uh, very fast. Okay, so um, before taking questions, I like to um, share this, how to create a positive flow of money energy. Um, I don't know how much you have, how much money you make, but uh, um, in, when it comes to happiness, the flow of energy and what kinds of energy flowing in your life matters. Um, just imagine billionaires and millionaires who have so much money, um, but if they have uh, no capacity to appreciate money coming in, money going out, people around him or her, that person could be feeling very miserable. And just look at this, for example, uh, this person who lost his job or her job and no money, but somehow he or she trusts life. So he or he, she will be taken care of by somebody or something and just smile, keep smiling and just keep supporting other people. Do you think uh, these people will be deserted? I'm sure they will be supported by somebody because they have this uh, such a loving energy. You know, nobody um, wants to um, keep him in a ditch. So if you can create this positive flow of money energy, uh, you don't have to worry about money. So uh, the reason why I don't have to uh, worry about money is that I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm well taken care of to begin with. Um, but if I lose everything, which is a little hard to think at the moment, but uh, just imagine um, and I, I lose everything. I have so many friends who are going to offer uh, support, money, a house or room, opportunities. So even if I lose everything financially, I'm not afraid because I will be uh, taken care of and also find out who are the true friends. So uh, that's why I can stay happy and positive in this uh, chaotic time. Uh, so uh, instead of just trying to accumulate wealth, uh, surround yourself with positive energy. 
So uh, I can share a few things here before I go. Donate money. Um, you don't have to donate $10,000. Donate a dollar, donate a quarter, donate 10 cents. Uh, even though uh, it's a small number, the fact that you're sharing money uh, gives you a message that, oh, I have more than enough. So um, give money to your friends and loved ones. Send gifts, could be a five dollar thing, or if it, you don't have money, send a mail or, or give a call to say uh, how much you care about them. Always give something extra. I divided my clients when I was doing accounting consulting job to two groups. One is, is um, I do just regular uh, work. And the other one, uh, whenever I met them, my clients, I brought something like $5 to $10, a small gift, like a herb tea or pens or pencils, um, just, you know, no big deal, just a little thing. And uh, after six months, I was so surprised that the category number one gave me some referrals, but not that many. But the category number two, that I showered them with the small gifts, Jesus, they gave me so many referrals of, uh, for my future clients. And look at, if you start accumulating these um, gifts every day, uh, it's gonna multiply. And number five, pay more than you're asked. Six, stop and feel the joy when you receive money. And pray for happiness when you give or spend money. And buy from people and business you like. Don't go, in other words, don't go try to buy the cheapest place. Be grateful for everything.